Hello, my name is Danny Ripley and I'm going to be your tutor today. Along with all areas of 3D art come some technicalities and one of those such areas is texturing. Even within the art of texturing come even more technicalities such as UVs with distortion. Today we're going to be looking at some of these areas within ZBrush 4 and Adobe Photoshop. This video is an overview and is not intended to instruct on the method shown. Texturing is a way in which we give our 3D models colour and depth by means of 2D maps that get wrapped around our 3D models according to the map's position of the UVs applied to that model. The quality of the UVs determine how much of the pixel space of the texture map gets applied to your model. When we UV map a model, we tend to do it in a way that divides limbs or segments of a model into many parts. These are often called UV shells. UV maps have no defined pixel size, but the arrangement of the size of these UV shells will determine the quality of the texture map applied to them. When UV mapping, we need to decide for what purpose our model is going to be primarily used for. If we say have a character in which we mainly look at the face, we give more UV space for that area. However, if we need equal quality for the whole model, we want all of our UV shells to have a 1-1 ratio according to each individual polygon for polygon basis. This means the size of the polygons on the model reflect the size of the polygons in UV space in relation to other polygons for their UV shells. When we have the UV shells the correct size, we also must make sure that they are the correct shape. Square polygons on the model must also be square polygons on the UV map. To test for UV distortion, we apply a checker map to view all the squares of the map when applied. These should be equal in size and shape. If they're not, then we need to work on the UV some more. By keeping the polygons the correct size and shape, we get no to little distortion. This means we get the highest quality translation of pixels to polygons. By making the best use of the available UV space, we get to have more pixels used for our UV shells. Texture map sizes range from as low as 512 by 512 pixels to 8192 pixels within ZBrush. Depending on how close we are to get to our models at render time is to how large of a map we require. For high quality details, generally a 4K map is used. This is normally good enough for most close up renders. The term 4K is an abbreviation that refers to how many thousand pixels are to be used by using the word K. In reality, just having a large map does not mean you are really going to be using all those pixels available. You may have a 4K map, but the face portion could only be say 512 pixels. This is not enough to achieve ultra high quality texture maps for the face. It is quite common to have a 3D model divided over several UV maps. This means we can assign a head alone to just most of the UV space, which means it can be using more pixels. We could have a map for the head, one for the body, and one for the, say the eyes or the mouth even. A good example of this would be the figures provided by Daz3D. Having more UV maps, however, does take longer to set up because we need a shader for each individual UV map space. Keeping in mind what we have already covered, we need to know how to get the best from ZBrush. ZBrush texturing method is primarily 3D painting and projection. This means we don't have to work in 2D, like in Photoshop.
To know the maximum amount of polygons needed for any chosen texture map size, we multiply the coordinates, U by V. This is like multiplying the vertical by the horizontal. A 4096 by 4096 pixel map is square in dimension. The UVs represent the vertical and the horizontal. In this case, if we get a 4096 and multiply it by 4096, we have the required number of polygons to fill this map. However, not all things are equal because some UV space is always unused. This means we could estimate that while 16 million polygons would be needed, we could well only actually need 10 to 12 million polygons. Selecting the empty areas of a texture map cannot be counted as usable pixel space when our UV shells are not using it. So instead we take into account of how much pixel space will be used. There are three main methods which ZBrush uses for texturing. These are Projection Master, Polypainting and ZAB Link. Projection Master has been in use for a long time now in ZBrush. This is texturing directly onto a texture map from a fixed position of the 3D model. You cannot freely paint on your model using this method. You must drop the model temporarily to the canvas Texture, then pick up the model back into 3D edit mode with the newly added textures painted onto the chosen blank map. The polygon count has no effect on the quality. Polypainting method is by which we paint onto a high polygon 3D object, which gives us the freedom to paint in 3D space. Only limitations is how many polygons our computer can handle. However, there is a way around that which we will look at in a minute. Painting this way provides the artist the best hand painting experience. In addition to hand painting, we can also have the option to project photo and pre-prepared textures onto a model. This is still using the poly painting method. When we project photos, we need to take into account the final pixel space that we are to project onto. If we know that our face area will end up needing, say, 3000 pixels from a 4K map, we need to use at least a photo of a face that also is the size of 3000 pixels, or slightly higher. Right now, I'm using the combination of poly painting and the spotlight tool within ZBrush 4. As you can see, we've got the nudge brush also within this spotlight, so we can nudge the textures around to fit directly to the actual shape of what we're trying to apply it to. In order to work fast, ZipRite uses a method in which the quality of painting is determined not by the UVs or the texture map, but how many polygons we paint on. Each polygon holds a pixel of paint data, so we require a lot of polygons to hold the amount of pixel data for the final texture map size we have chosen. Zinap Link is a method in which we work similar to Projection Master, only the data does not get put directly onto a texture map. It gets held as poly painting data. ZApp Link allows us to work between ZBrush and our favorite 2D application. The most common is Photoshop. With ZApp Link, the position of the model is sent out as a fixed 2D capture to say Photoshop in my case. From here, we can paint in Photoshop in its own layer on several layers. This sends the data back to ZBrush in which gets put into polypaint data. For this to work at its best, we need to take into account the rules we have looked at so far. When we work in ZApp Link, we must determine how much we fill the canvas with the target area we are texturing. When ZApp Link sends that fixed position, it also sets a document size within Photoshop, which is based off the ZBrush canvas size. Again, if our final pixel size for the face is say 3000 pixels, 
We must fill the canvas with the face and set the canvas size larger than 3000 pixels. This can put quite a bit of load on the system. For some, Z -app link may not be the way for large texture maps. If our system struggles, all we have to do is have a large enough canvas size for the area that we're working on, which means we may need to work on smaller areas of a model at a time. In some cases, we need to get the final texture map back into our 2D application for fixing seams and areas which didn't quite get the best projection and hue. What you're viewing me do during this time lapse is copy patches from my photo reference, then place them into Z -app link document. And here I carefully place each part and then merge them together. Texturing on high polygon models is essential for holding the right amount of colour and sculpting data. At times our machines cannot handle the required amount of polygons for several reasons. 1. Not enough system memory. 2. ZBrush not being 64-bit to use enough system memory. 3. CPU is not powerful enough to support the required amount of polygons. When we build our base mesh, we tend to want to keep our model optimized to hold more polygons in areas that we need more detail in. This means the size of the polygons for the thighs of the character may be much larger than the polygons, making for the shape of the lips and the eyes. Because of this, we at times need to generate more polygons for our model in order to have enough for areas which initially had too few. This can be because we later decided we wanted more detail in certain areas. We can of course produce more polygons for these areas, but it means we will be left with a higher polygon base mesh.